When you consider the human in human resources, the most basic meaning is people and getting the right people for the organization and putting them into the right jobs. And that's the subject of this unit. Now we'll take up the elements of the selection process, measuring success, government requirements, methods of selection, employment tests, interviewing, and making the discussion effective, and of course the actual selection. Now we've created the job opening, put out the call for interested job seekers, and received a sufficient number of applications. Now it's time to think about choosing. No, we're not ready yet to the point of actually making the final choice, but at least we're working through all of the steps that it will take. In my days as a radio and television news director and radio program director, I hired lots of people. Now believe me, it can be a daunting job, and I could just never make it simple or quick. And then again, maybe it isn't supposed to be or shouldn't be. Now there's a long trail to follow to do the job right and to get that just right person for the right position. There are six basic elements of the selection process. You've created the job opening and put out the announcement. Then the applications begin arriving. Of course, you have to make sure you have enough for a selection and enough to stand government scrutiny that the process was fair and open to a diverse pool of candidates. The next step is to review the applications and then determine which ones appear promising and qualified. And one way is to read each and every application and make a choice. There's a new trend, though, in developing our high-tech world that speeds the process by reviewing applications through computerization and optical scanning. Now here, the machine is programmed to select applications that include specific buzzwords, terms, or phrases. And those that match and include the most have a better chance of moving on to the next round. Once an initial qualified and interesting pool is selected, then the process continues to narrow the field. Now there can be a variety of testing programs. Doing well here often means being considered seriously. Once this point is reached, Human Resources begins checking the applicant's references. And then it gets more serious, and it's likely that the candidate either is the favorite for the job, or at least among a very few. Now the responsibility of human resources is to find out whether there are reasons to not hire the candidate. And this is when human resources gets into background checks. Trusting all of this goes well, then the hiring manager or the selection team agrees on its candidate. The offer is made, accepted, and the candidate is placed into the position. See, it took a lot of time just to even describe what happens. Now imagine how long it takes to actually go through the entire process for real. Firms want an effective selection process. It has to be both reliable and valid. For reliability, the process has to be free of random error with consistent measurements. As for being valid, a performance measurement needs to be related to what it's supposed to measure, a correlation between job test scores and job performance scores. The content has to be valid, with consistency between test items and real-world job-related situations, and it has to meet legal requirements. Selecting the successful applicant is more involved than just choosing the first one you like best. Here's where the government comes in. Yes, government has even managed to make some major inroads of its own into the hiring process. Organizations must now guarantee and prove that the process avoids discrimination, that persons with disabilities are given a fair chance to win the job, that selection methods are valid for job performance, and that the testing scores may not be adjusted to favor any particular individual or groups of individuals or discriminate against any persons or groups. Furthermore, it's no longer permissible to gather information about any protected class status, such as race, gender, religion, or disability. Personal information must be kept confidential. And finally, background checks must be conducted with the permission of the person being considered, and candidates have to be notified about adverse decisions. Information can come from resumes and applications. Now, the advantage here is that this is a very economical and inexpensive way of getting information. A downside, though, is that the information presented is not always reliable, and that's because it's the applicant who's providing the information. Another method is making use of employment tests and work samples. Now, when I'd consider candidates for a television news position, for example, I'd often have the candidate write sample news stories from lists of facts I'd give them. 
I'd also want to see how well a candidate looked and handled him or herself on camera. The tests have to meet the abilities needed for the job. The test should be easy to administer and inexpensive. The test must also avoid charges of discrimination. The interview is also a major step in the hiring process. Generally, structured interviews are considered more valid than unstructured ones. Everyone interviewed can be held to the same standards by having to answer the same questions. Interviews may be costly, though, and they may introduce bias into the selection process if those administering the interviews don't carefully craft the questions. There are many different types of employment tests or tests that cover a wide range of subjects. There can be physical ability tests, for example, that deal with strength, endurance, and psychomotor abilities. Now, not everyone can be considered at the same physical levels, and thus it's possible to introduce a degree of discrimination into the process, and the tests are not always job-related. There are cognitive ability tests or intelligent tests that work well for complex and adaptability needs. They're relatively inexpensive, but can be challenged as discriminatory. Personality tests can be valid for some specific jobs. Now, they're simple to administer and meet legal requirements. Honesty tests can predict behavior, but polygraphs can no longer be used to screen job applicants. Other employment evaluations can include drug testing, impairment testing, and medical examinations. But the medical exam is only legal after a job offer has been made. The interview can be a make-it-or-break-it part of the process. The most effective interviews are narrow in scope, structured, and standardized. Now, they identify job requirements. Interviews should develop a list of questions in advance that can be asked to all candidates. One of the most difficult parts of the interview for the one asking the question is to recognize his or her own personal biases and to keep those opinions out of the interview. One means of reducing personal bias can be to conduct a panel interview with a number of interviewers. Effective interviews also tend to be held in comfortable locations, free from distractions. Interviewers should make sure that the questions are relative to the position. The interviewers should also provide information about the organization. Now, this long path finally leads us to the actual selection. Now, the idea is to choose the best person for the job, the one with the best fit. Ability and motivation are important qualities. The process should also be what's called a multi-hurdle model, where each stage eliminates some candidates and that each stage does determine which candidates are the better fits for the position. Now, it's difficult to rate all candidates on precisely the same set of standards and expect even the best candidate to be strong in each and every area. Some organizations use what's called the compensatory model. Now, people all have different strengths and weaknesses. So, with this line of thinking, all candidates can be evaluated with all methods. Furthermore, it's possible that a candidate who scores poorly on one test may actually end up doing very well on another. Now, I've always found hiring to be one of the toughest parts of management. Oh, it can be gut-wrenching, especially when there is not that one candidate who just stands out from among the rest. Then you have your own self-doubts. Did I make the right call? And then again, when I follow these basic principles and steps, I really have to say, I feel I almost always did. Next, we'll take up training employees.